From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. Now at 7 o'clock, the manhunt intensifies for three gunmen and a getaway driver involved in that shooting that injured eight students at a SEPTA bus stop. The latest clues in the investigation. President Biden gives his annual State of the Union address ahead of what will likely be a contentious re-election battle. His message to voters and the response from the Republican Party. And taking a look outside right now, expect some rain, but... Not a total washout this weekend. Kate Bilo is tracking when the rain will arrive and it could affect your plans. Morning, everyone. Welcome to the News at 7, streaming on CBS News Philadelphia and on Philly 57. I'm Jim Donovan. And I'm Howard Monroe, sitting in for Janelle Burrell this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's get a check of your next weather forecast. Kate, it might rain tomorrow. Well, it's going to rain tomorrow, but today is supposed to be nice. Today is a nice day. Yeah, it's clouding up a little bit right now. We're in and out of the clouds and sunshine today, but certainly the brightest day of the week. We had a beautiful sunrise. You can see a few more clouds here in Ocean City this morning, but a quiet start to the day. Great day to be out and about. Not too bad if you're taking the kids to the bus stop. No problems weather-wise on the roads this morning. Finally, 42 degrees in Philadelphia. It is feeling a little colder than that, and that's thanks to a brisk northeast breeze. Those winds will be dying down through the day, but feels like 37, so coldest morning of the week as well. You definitely want to grab the heavier jacket today. Clouds and radar showing that first band of clouds moving through right now. Now, that is going to eventually clear, and you can see some breaks in the cloud cover down around D.C., so clouds to sun to clouds out ahead of our next storm. And this is taking shape for your Saturday. This will start out with showers like what we're seeing here in Ohio and Indiana. Imagine all of this shifting to the north and east for tomorrow. The heaviest rain that you see down here uh, along the Mississippi River, that gets here by tomorrow evening. So planning today, kind of cloudy through 8 a.m. and then more sunshine as the day goes on. And by 2 p.m., that looks great. 55 with sun, a few more clouds later on this evening. And then here comes the rain again. Our break ends by tomorrow morning. And throughout the day tomorrow, rain chances just increase all day with the heaviest tomorrow evening into tomorrow night. We'll time it out hour by hour. And then that's not the last of it. We've got wind on the back edge of this system. More on that coming up as well. Chandler, I'll send it over to you. Thank you, Kate. Well, as you travel out the door this morning, we aren't talking about any any accidents, so that's some good news. Nice conditions, you just need the sunglasses. We'll start off on the Ben Franklin Bridge. Still looking like a quiet drive, no major delays as you travel with the taillights from our base in Jersey into the city of Philadelphia there. But let's switch directions. We'll travel into Jersey, travel up to Florence Township. We do have some construction here that joined us later on this morning. It's going to continue till about 4.30 this afternoon. So along the northbound lanes of 295, just after Burlington Mount Holly Road, you'll see one lane is blocked. Again, this is going to be cruise will be out there until 4.30 this afternoon. And a different 295 over in Wilmington, Delaware. Long-term road work that we've seen throughout the work week continuously still remains. One lane is still blocked between Route 13 and 95. Jim, this is set to clear Saturday evening. Thank you, Chandler. Police are continuing to search for the shooters who opened fire on students waiting for a SEPTA bus in northeast Philly on Wednesday. Eight teens were shot in that ambush. One of them is in critical condition this morning. Jasmine Payu joins us now with what police know this morning. Jasmine. Good morning, Howard. Jim, today marks day three of the search for these suspects, and officials say they have all hands on deck to identify these three brazen shooters and the getaway driver. That includes getting tips, scouring social media, and pulling as much video as possible. Now, here's the latest. Police say the car used in the shooting was stolen, and highway patrol officers found it on West Fern Street Thursday. According to officers, the investigation led them to another vehicle, a stolen Kia Sportage, that may be connected to the suspects. They say they are currently processing both vehicles and trying to pull as much forensic evidence from them as they can. In the meantime, they want the public to keep spreading this surveillance video that shows the suspects firing at least 30 rounds in hopes that it will help with their investigation. People did see things. We had some video we were able to recover there and some other places. So things are starting to come together based on the video that you put out yesterday. Uh, we have received numerous tips, and we are working on them tips. We encourage people to continue that because some of those tips are corroborating information we have uh, that I can't talk about yet. Uh, but we are moving towards uh, knowing more about what happened yesterday and who we may be looking for. Now, officials say they have an active patrol plan that includes more officers around schools and along SEPTA routes. They also provided an update on the 16-year-old shot nine times. They say he is still in critical condition. However, doctors say they are optimistic. Jim.
Thank you, Jasmine. Of course, we'll continue to follow the investigation into the shooting of these eight students when we're not on television. You can always get the latest updates online at cbsphiladelphia.com. Speaking of SEPTA, SEPTA is taking CBS News Philadelphia behind the scenes to show us what the agency is doing to improve safety on the transit system. Yeah, this is video now of SEPTA's virtual patrol unit where police are keeping a watchful eye on the hundreds of thousands of riders using buses and trains on any given day. SEPTA says it has access to 30,000 cameras throughout the city. The camera systems that we have access to, SEPTA and Philly, is immense. Often when uh, offenders commit something with SEPTA and they uh, leave street level, we can get, this, get these cameras up depending on location and you can track and see where they go. SEPTA Police Chief Charles Lawson says data across criminal categories involving SEPTA buses is down except for gun violence. He says his department plans to perform pat-downs when legal. The head of Philadelphia's Office of LGBT Affairs is telling her side of the story. She says a Pennsylvania state trooper unjustly pulled her over and claims that she and her husband were arrested because they're black. Video of the traffic stop along the Schuylkill Expressway was posted to social media over the weekend. Pennsylvania State uh, Police say a trooper pulled over Selena Morrison McLean for multiple vehicle code violations. Her husband, Darius McLean, pulled up behind the trooper. State police say McLean or ignored multiple orders resulting in the trooper arresting him. They say Morrison McLean interfered while the trooper was arresting her husband. The couple says the trooper unlawfully pulled over Morrison McLean and acted aggressively towards them. Darius and I did nothing wrong and did not deserve to be treated the way we were doing the arrest and afterwards by the other troopers who responded to the highway. DA's office says it's still investigating the incident and has not made a decision on whether to pursue charges against the couple. The trooper in question has been placed on restricted duty status and is not on patrol. We asked Pennsylvania State Police to respond to the couple's allegations and we have not heard back. Today is International Women's Day. Philadelphia Mayor Sherelle Parker plans to mark the day with a tribute at City Hall later today. Also, Cradles to Crayons is celebrating the day by hosting a networking event. The nonprofit's mission supports children living in poverty to help them look and feel their best. The event will be held from 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. at Cradles to Crayons Giving Factory in North Philadelphia. President Joe Biden is visiting our area today for an event in Delaware County. His visit comes one day after delivering his State of the Union address. In his speech, the president touted his administration's accomplishments and drew a stark contrast to his likely 2024 GOP rival. CBS News correspondent Willie James Inman has more from Capitol Hill. Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. President Biden came out swinging in an election year State of the Union address, hitting many of the key issues on voters' minds, like his age. The issue facing our nation isn't how old we are, it's how old are our ideas. Reproductive rights. I'll restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land again. The economy and immigration. We need to act now. The president sometimes sparred with Republican lawmakers, like this response to Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene over the killing of a young Georgia woman, allegedly by a suspect who illegally entered the U.S. from Venezuela. Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. The president also took on his likely 2024 GOP rival, former President Donald Trump, referring to him as my predecessor 13 times. What's happened now is a horror show. Trump slammed the address on social media, calling it, quote, an angry, polarizing, and hate-filled speech, while Alabama Senator Katie Britt delivered the official GOP response with her kitchen as the backdrop. President Biden just doesn't get it. On foreign policy, Biden vowed to stand up to Russian President Vladimir Putin. As pro-Palestinian protesters stood outside the Capitol, inside, the president announced plans to build a temporary port to get more humanitarian aid into Gaza. And he pledged to bring Israeli hostages taken by Hamas home. Willie James Inman, CBS News, Capitol Hill. CBS News Philadelphia staying on top of a story we first brought to you a few months ago. Two 11-year-old girls saved their favorite hockey rink at the new Hanover Township Community Park in Montgomery County from turning it into a pickleball court. Now they're working to renovate it. Lily Walter and her friend Natalie Van Druff, they met with township officials yesterday. They presented their renovation plans through a movie trailer they created 
showing some needed repairs to the deck. The township agreed to make some of the safety fixes and approved the search for a sponsorship for further repairs. The girls recently launched a t-shirt fundraiser to help pay for those renovations. Well, get ready. We are now just two days and four hours away from the start of the Philadelphia St. Patrick's Day Parade. Philadelphia is getting ready for that, that, uh, that parade with a series of events. Yes, indeedy. The Grand Marshal Dinner was held last night at the Crystal Tea Room in Philadelphia. The evening featured the official sashing of the Grand Marshal as well as the 2024 Ring of Honor, which recognizes those who have given exemplary service to the Irish community. Sunday's parade begins at 16th and JFK and continues to 5th and Market. If you can't make it to the parade in person, you can catch it on TV. The parade airs this Sunday from noon to 3 p.m. on our sister station, Philly 57, and will be streaming on CBS News Philadelphia. You can also watch an encore of the broadcast on March 15th and again on St. Patrick's Day. The CBS News Philadelphia morning team is proud to host this year's event.